Pathpilot Quick Tips Robot Edition. Today, we're going to talk about wiring up uh, an accessory to one of the digital output ports on the robot. So we sell a number of accessories that are pre-wired, solenoid valves, a couple other things. Uh, one thing we don't currently uh, or yet provide is a way to control a relay or a contactor. So I thought I'd just do a quick tip video on how to wire up a contactor. And one important thing to note here is the digital outputs on our ZA6 robot, there are 12 of them, but they're 24 volt on off. So if you have a device that requires, instead of 24 volt on off, uh, instead requires dry contact, like a closed or open connection, and a typical example would be a welder, if you're connecting a MIG welder, uh, most of those require you to make a connection, like closing a switch, not provide 24 volts to the welder, then um, this quick tip video is for you because relays or contactors make that connection. The other, the other thing you might want to do with a, a contactor especially is control something with a high current draw. So you may have uh, like a shop vac or some vacuum system, something that sucks down a lot of 120 or 240 volt AC current. And if that's the case, then you have to use a contactor. Um, we'll show you how to wire one up today. Firstly, I've got a 24 volt contactor. It's a thin rail mount. Um, it's just a simple contactor, but what's important is a 24 volt DC contactor. Any relay or contactor you're gonna wanna use for this will be something that has a 24 volt coil. You can't use a five volt coil or 12 volt coil or an alternating current coil. It's gotta be a, a relay or a contactor that takes 24 volt DC for its coil. Uh, we also have some wire, handily. One is red, one is black. I'll just use those to differentiate positive and negative. Uh, screwdrivers. I've got an N12 connector. So this is the connector that our robot uses for both inputs and outputs. It's called M12 because of the diameter of the connector is 12 millimeter diameter. And ours has five pins, and you can see from the center here, there's a little center detent, keeps you from plugging it in upside down, right? What, uh, what we're going to do here is we'll open this M12 connector up, really easy, just screws off, and exposes five pins. They're all numbered, kind of hard to see, but you see one, two, three, four, and then the center pin is used for a ground. We're gonna find which two pins are responsible for the 24 volt switched output. We'll do that by looking in the manual for the ZA6, show you how to read the manual in the schematic. And then we're gonna just using these screw term terminals, we'll connect our uh, negative and positives to the switched output. Uh, we'll go ahead and route them through the little strain relief here on the back. And we'll take those over and connect them to the coil terminals on this contactor. Easy way to tell, most things that have 24 volt coil will have printed right there. 24 volt DC printed right on the coil of that contactor. And as it turns out, this one does have a positive and a negative. There's a little LED in there that tells you when the coil's activated. So um, we'll go ahead and get that wired up and then I'll show you how to control that output uh, manually through the PathPilot user interface. And then we'll go ahead and add that output, uh, toggle output command to a program just to show you how to use it inside a robot program. All the documentation for the ZA6 robot is online. Uh, it's all publicly available. You don't have to enter a passcode or anything to access it. You can access it right from the robot control if you want. And if you don't own a ZA6, you're welcome to go read our documentation if that's the kind of thing you like doing on a cold winter night. So it's searchable, which is great. I'm gonna search for schematic and that should pull up the electrical schematic for the ZA6. We'll pull up the latest revision here. But what we're looking for is the page that talks about inputs and outputs. Here we go. So we have digital inputs here. And I'm gonna look at digital output one and two. You'll notice that there are two outputs per M12 connector. So every M12 connector on the robot has two outputs. And we're gonna we're gonna connect this to just the first output of one of the connectors. We could plug it into whatever, whichever connector we want. So 
So we can see here what we're looking for. Each connector has uh, no contact ground. We've got 24 volts. We don't need that. We've got digital out one. And then we've got a shared zero volts for digital outs one and two. So if we want to use digital out one on the connector, we're, we're going to connect to pin two. And we'll connect the negative to pin three. Here's where you do the time lapse, the boring part with some music or something, because nobody really wants to see somebody strip wires. So we're going to go hot or positive to number two, which we saw in the schematic. And then we're going to go black or uh, ground, zero volts to pin three. I don't know if you can see that there. Uh, I'll make it a little too close. Oh, no. Yeah, okay, that's good. pin three gets our zero volt connection. Lovely working with these tiny little screw terminals. So we do include four extra M12 connectors with each of the robots, but of course you can buy them, um, you can buy them separately if you need more than four. And you can buy them anywhere too. Uh, any M12 five pin connector will work. The ones we sell have this nice uh, threaded barrel on them so you can, you can lock them. And I'll connect the strain relief here. Now, even with two little cables like this, the strain relief actually works pretty well. But typically, you'd have a duplex cable with one sheath on it. I'll strip the other ends of this. And just for the fun of it, let's do this. I'm going to take the multimeter, and I'll set it to volts mode here. right? And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to find out if, the, if we've connected this correctly. I'll plug this into robots output one. And we'll put the leads on these two wires. We'll see if we get 24 volts when we switch it on and off. I'll hold black to black, red to red. And I'm going to go over the status screen here. And we'll click output one. Hey, and sure enough, look at that. So that would be off, on off. So, so we got that working correctly. Let's go ahead and wire it up to the um, terminals on our relay. And okay, so I think we're ready to test this. I've got the positive wire to the positive terminal, negative wire to the negative, and I'm just going to toggle this output. You can actually see the contactor make contact there. So if you had um, a high current device you needed to switch, you could switch it using these terminals. Um, or if you just needed uh, an input like the, the MIG welder that I told you about, which you'll probably see in another video coming up soon, um, where you're trying to replace the trigger on the gun with a, uh, an electronic output, um, you just put the, the MIG gun's trigger contacts up to two of these connections. So just for fun, let's go ahead and we'll add this into a robot program. And we'll call this, let's see, I'm going to go to the all zeros waypoint. And then we will jog the machine a little bit. OK, just for fun, create a new waypoint. And then I will add a move to that waypoint to the program. Add a move to all zeros to the program. And then we're going to go to the outputs, and we will set, oh, well, let's give this output a name first, shall we, so we remember it. Contactor. We'll set digital one contactor low. Sure, add that to the program. And then we'll set it to high. And let's make sure these things happen in between the two moves. So we should move to all zeros. We'll change the contactor to low. We'll move to this waypoint will change the contactor to high. All right. So 
So today we went over how to wire up uh, your own device to one of the ZA6's digital outputs. Uh, talked about how the outputs are 24 volt high and low, and how you might use a contactor or a relay if you need a dry contacts connection or just a closed switch output connection. And then we went through a quick example, uh, just wiring up this little 24 volt contactor to our output and using it in a program. Uh, I hope you found that informative and helpful and thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.